Howdy folks, Josh Mason here with an important video. Uh, this video is a long one, it's about 48 minutes long, but it's very important and I really urge you to watch the whole thing or at the very least skim through it. I traveled around the country and interviewed three of the best upper cervical, Blair upper cervical chiropractors in the country, starting with Dr. Drew Hall in LA, then moving to Dr. Tom Forrest, who's the godfather of the practice, who teaches most of the other practitioners he was the mentor for Drew Hall. And third, Dr. Kevin Pekka in New Jersey, who happens to be five minutes from my mom's house. So um, was traveling and ended up doing a little interview with each of them, and you'll get to hear their stories and how they started. Uh, personally, I believe Blair Upper Cervical is a crucial, crucial piece of the puzzle for uh, health, mental and physical health. It dramatically improved my neck pain shoulder pain, and also provided me with more mental clarity and some neurological benefits. Um, I truly think it is a core, core, core piece of the puzzle. I will be recommending every client to see a Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor before uh, and during uh, the detoxification process. I can't say it enough times, get your atlas checked. It is of crucial importance, and if I can't convince you, let these other three guys convince you uh, with their work and, and their uh, explanation of their journeys. So, already, hope you enjoy the show. <laughs> uh, my wife always says, you know, whatever comes in your mind doesn't have to come out in your mouth, and I haven't paid much attention. Like, no. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, we're here with Dr. Drew Hall. You are a Blair practitioner in LA, Carson, and one office in downtown LA, correct? Well, you're close. It's not wow. downtown LA, Koreatown, actually. It's about 10 miles. Okay. So, I want to hear about your personal journey uh, and how Blair Upper Cervical helped your life, and then we'll start getting into you as, as now a practitioner. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> I've told this story over 10,000 times because I've had over 10,000 patients, and I tell every new patient why I got into the Blair Upper Cervical technique. So, my journey starts uh, junior year in high school. I was on the baseball team, and after practice, I got in a wrestling match with a buddy of mine, and I happened to be losing for the first time. And uh, he lost his grip on me and dropped me flat on my head from about two and a half feet off the ground. I landed right on the pitcher's rubber, and when I landed, I heard <laughs> in my neck, and my first thought was, oh God, I hope I'm not paralyzed. I slowly rolled over. Uh, wiggled my toes, I could feel everything, and okay, cool, not paralyzed, stood up, I didn't have any pain, I wasn't paralyzed, being a boy, I did a lot of crazy things growing up, so I figured nothing happened, and went through the rest of the day, literally went to bed, never gave that incident another thought until about two and a half years later, which we'll talk about, but anyway, so I end up um, about six months later, slowly over six months after that initial trauma, and again, I didn't put two and two together, the problems I was developing connected to the, the being dropped on my head. But within six months, I had chronic headache problems, like someone kicked me in the back of the head. Cognitively, I still passed all my classes, but I noticed my reading and comprehension, my recall and testing, falling conversations that I was in with patient or with people. I started having like trouble tracking and lose my train of thought. And anyway, I over time it became an insomniac and we're talking falling asleep taking three and four hours and when you do fall asleep waking up seven times a night and when you wake up in the morning realizing that you actually never got into deep sleep so I was always kind of on the surface over time I developed uh, muscle aches through my whole body like someone beat me from head to toe my energy I played three sports through high school my senior year in PE, when they ask you to go run two laps, I felt like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And for those of you who had shin splints, that kind of would be what would happen to my body. My whole body would just lock down when I'd do any load-bearing exercises or aerobic-type exercise. And so, slowly, as all this is happening, obviously I knew there was trouble, but it was kind of a slow, um, a, it was a slow, I never... I'm lost it's for okay. words. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'll edit. It was a um, it was a slow process, so I never connected 
the head dropping incident and what was happening and and I also never told anyone because I tend to be positive and so I generally just kept telling myself for two years this was going on that eventually this is going to go away. I told myself that five times a day and so the other thing was I didn't look sick so anyone who saw me from the outside would have never thought in a million years that I was suffering from these other problems I haven't told you about, depression, anxiety, cold hands and feet. I developed big red ulcers on my tongue. Um, I had, I already talked about the cognitive problems, but anyway, so all this is happening. I end up uh, two and a half years later, I'm like at a dead end. I, I'm waking up with night sweats. I'm walking home from school, from college, and I have the thought, if I gotta feel like this for two more years, I'll probably kill myself. And it was one of those thoughts where it wasn't totally under my conscious control and that scared the hell out of me. So that was kind of the impetus to, I've got to do something about this. And I went home, I told my parents, and I basically told my mom the whole thing of everything that was going on. And the first thing she said was, what, you've been feeling like this for two years? Why didn't you say something? And... So we did what most American families would do. We got to our family doctor. He was a good guy. He asked me a bunch of questions, and he was honest with me at the end. He said, you know, Drew, I really don't know what's going on. Let's send you to an internist. So the internist took a complete blood panel, uh, MRI of my brain because I had constant headaches, and all those tests came back negative. And so then they sent me to a neurologist, and they took a CT, a complete uh, neurological workup, all those tests were negative. And then I was eventually sent to an infectious disease specialist and they took a, a complete blood panel that's different than the CBC blood panel. And the reason they sent me there is I had been bit by several ticks when I was younger. And I did, I had a lot of the Lyme symptoms. I had joint pain, I had heart palpitations. Uh, I had carpal tunnel in both wrists since there were no computers at that time. And so, they did all those panels and everything was clear from an infectious disease standpoint. And so I was sent back to the internist and I was basically told, like lots of you who are listening to this video have been from doctor to doctor to doctor and no one knows what the hell is going on. And what's the last thing they tell you? You need to go see a psychiatrist because of course it's all in your head, right? What I should have been told was, you know, Drew, we've done everything we can in medicine. We've run a whole battery of tests. And to be honest with you, we really don't know what's going on. You should look outside of medicine, the paradigm of medicine for a different way of looking at health. Maybe they can help you. But I was told it was all in my head, go see a psychiatrist. And that was the point at which I said the hell with these people. I was 19, and uh, but I still had a mind of my own. And I'm like, I'm done with medicine. And unfortunately, still to this day, I have a little chip on my sh shoulder towards them for that uh, part of my life. They do do some things well, but you gotta know what they do well, and one of the things they don't do well is delivering health, right? They're good at treating symptoms, but you gotta look underlying the symptom to find the cause of something and remove the cause to actually get well. Throwing drugs at people and covering things up obviously isn't a solution. So I was forced to look outside of the uh, mainstream paradigm, and unfortunately at that time, Google and YouTube weren't around, so I was in a Barnes & Noble bookstore in the health section flipping through all these different books and I was lucky enough to happen upon a book that was titled Chronic Fatigue Syndrome and Fibromyalgia. I didn't know what in the hell that meant other than the fatigue part and I was tired all the time and that's why I pulled it off the shelf and I flipped through this book and all these stories in there were basically me. And I get a little further into the book and it says there's no known cause and there's no known cure and most people don't get better and that was my worst nightmare actually was being 19 feeling like garbage every day for two years. And my worst nightmare was that I'd have to live like that for the rest of my life. So in the back of that book, there was a support group. And because everything that was in that book was me, I called them. They were in the San Francisco area. And we called them up and I talked to this lady. And it was the first lady that I actually talked to that I felt like understood what I was going through. So over the next 20 minutes, I threw up on her, told her my whole story. And at the end of everything, she said, you know, Drew, you really should go see this homeopath in San Ramon. I was living in Walnut Creek at the time. It's about a 20-minute drive. I'm like, uh, okay, but what's a homeopath? You know, I was at the point where I was willing to do anything, yeah, but I didn't know what a homeopath was, and she kind of explained. So 
it made sense and I was willing to do anything, like I said. So we called her, uh, Dr. Stratford up and uh, unfortunately she's no longer with us. Made an appointment with her, went into her office and to make a really, really long story short, she asked me about 75 questions like homeopaths do. And when I told her I had a constant headache, like someone kicked me right in the back of the head for two years, she started asking me trauma questions. And I'd never given that being dropped on my head a second thought until she started asking me, you know, have you ever had a head injury? And when she said that, and we've all had this experience when a memory just flashes right through, that whole episode of being dropped flat on my head just, boom, came through. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it was dropped on my head from two and a half feet. And then all the the sounds of what I heard when it happened came through and and so she said you know you need to go see a Blair upper cervical chiropractor there's this guy in Pleasanton named Dr. Tom Forrest and you really should go see him and when I heard chiropractor I immediately shut down because what I knew of chiropractic was this and I didn't want anyone twisting and popping and pulling my neck and so I voiced that concern to her and she said no you don't have to worry about that. Dr. Forrest does this special technique. It's called Blair. There's no twisting. There's no popping. There's no pulling. And he's the best in the whole San Francisco Bay Area. Trust me, just go see this guy. And I'm like, okay, it must not be about money. She's trying to get rid of me. He doesn't twist, pop, and pull anything. So I have nothing to lose. And to be honest with you, it was the I had the lowest expectations of anything I had tried to that point when she referred me to Dr. Forrest, but I made an appointment anyway, and to make the third long story short, I drove in, parked in his office, came through the front door, and I'll never forget this, it was like it was yesterday, and I don't know how, other, how to explain this to you other than I felt like I was in the right place. I had a peace like inside of me, and I wasn't really that spiritual of a person at that time, but I felt like, okay, there's something going on in this place. And Dr. Forrest explained the whole rationale behind the upper cervical procedure, that the head weighs 10 to 12 pounds, it sits on a poor little bone that's 2 ounces, and because you have a bowling ball sitting on a 2 ounce bone and it's on the end of a stick, your neck, that the upper neck is the weakest junction in the spine, and that coupled with the head injury and then the side effect of after being dropped on my head, that is kind of when the majority of my health problems started. I was like, okay, let's do this. So he took some 3D x-rays of my neck. Um, laid me down on the table after he came up with the exact measurements of how I was out of alignment because everyone's out of alignment differently, put me on a table, got under my left ear, and as I'm laying there, I'm completely freaked out about what he's going to do, and he makes the correction, and then he made the second correction, and I literally thought he didn't do anything, and he rested me in a bed for 20 minutes afterwards. I remember driving home thinking, okay, I really like that guy. Everything he said makes total sense, but how in the heck is that little tap that he did under my ear going to do anything and for the rest of the day I didn't feel any different I went to bed my normal 10 o'clock and everyone's response is differently but for me it was the first night in over two and a half years not only a did I fall asleep in five or ten minutes because when I woke up in the morning I didn't remember falling asleep b when I woke up I realized I didn't wake up once and c it was the first time in two and a half years when I woke up I felt like I actually felt rested not like I was perfect, like I was before the head injury, but obviously something happened. And it wasn't an overnight process. Over about a six-month period, I went through ups and downs. My nausea, which was every day for two years, was gone within three days. My headaches, which were every day for two and a half years, within the first month, I was having day, several days put together where I didn't have a headache. Within two months, the headaches were gone my sleep pattern changed, my sinuses that were swollen shut for two and a half years within eight weeks were open. My energy started to come back, my brain started to work again. Emotionally, my depression was gone, and I think that was two parts. It was one, um, when I started getting health changes, I all of a sudden had something to hang my hat on, the, what was the cause of my problem. I think one of the big problems, people who are suffering with chronic health problems, is that they don't know what the cause of why they're suffering with and they go from doctor to doctor to doctor and no one knows what the hell's going on that creates an immense amount of anxiety and depression and so having had health changes right away uh, that changed my whole outlook and, and mindset and the bottom line is Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractic and Dr. Tom Forrest changed my entire life and that's the whole reason I do what I do in my office. Wow. What do you say to someone, so for me I, I never had that 
wow moment after my first adjustment. Yeah. It was like a wow month and a half kind of drawn. So yeah. what do you say to people who come to your office or come to doctor come to see Dr. Forrest and they don't get this miraculous healing that they may be wishing for after watching this? And do you, like what's what other processes can happen? And are you in the minority? With well, let, let me just clarify this by saying it was miraculous in that for two and a half years, I was just baseline done. And so any change in my health status was miraculous at that point because I'd tried everything and nothing really was doing anything. And so to clarify what I said about my recovery, it was an 18 month process. It wasn't like in two months, everything was gone. There are cases who come into a Blair Upper Cervical Office, they get corrected and it's miraculous in weeks, but they're, most people, they've been out of alignment like myself for two, three, sometimes 20, 30 years. And while they can get symptomatic relief at the beginning, the healing process, and that involves all the soft tissue that's been damaged, the ligaments, the soft tissue, the muscle patterning that happens from an upper neck injury. So the vertebra dislodges the muscles, adapt, the ligament gets torn, the soft tissue adapts to that new position. And then there's a whole postural adaptation that goes on through the whole spine. And sometimes that adaptive process from the original injury takes a year and a half for the body to get where it needs to get to deal with this upper neck irritation the best that it can. And then the patient comes in the office two, five, 10, 15 years later, you get that vertebra that's locked back under the body's control there's a whole readaptation process that takes place. And so we always tell patients that you may get symptomatic relief rather quickly, but the straightening process of the spine, what we call retracing, the body will retrace back through the old health, that takes months to get to a stabilization standpoint. So upper cervical is not a swallow pill and an overnight sensation. It's a process, it's a natural healing process that takes time. And then once someone is well, we'll just check them periodically to maintain uh, the wellness that they've achieved through upper cervical. How long should someone give this a try before saying, hey, this wasn't right for me? How long should someone give the Blair upper cervical procedure before they say this isn't right for me? Depends on how you look at health. If you're just into treating symptoms and feeling better, which some people are, um, generally what I find in the practice is within six weeks, if someone's gonna come around with whatever they have, they're gonna get some change in their symptomology, whether that's they have post-concussion syndrome and mental fog, they have back pain, they have migraine headache. Now, there's a big difference between getting a symptom change and complete symptom relief, and then the next stage is complete stabilization of the spine, which takes months upon months upon months. But generally, I would say, someone who gets under Blair upper cervical care within the first eight weeks, they're gonna have identifiable things that are happening uh, in their body that let them know that, oh, I'm in the right place. Now, I will preface that with saying, I've had patients that have stuck with us for three, four, five months and had no change that still came out of the health problems that they came in for, and they tried everything else, so they were looking for, it made sense to them, and they were willing to give it a, a longer time period. Now, I'll also say, that my belief system is that every single person in the country and the world should have their upper neck checked from the day that they're born to the day that they die because just like eating well is one of the pillars of health your central nervous system is the basis for every function in your body and it's something that should be checked if you're actually interested in maximizing and optimizing health beautiful where can people find you uh, if people want to find me, I have a website. It's www.doctor, that's D-R-D-R-E-W-H-A-L-L.com. That's drdrewhall.com. And on YouTube, I've got, I don't know, 100 videos on there explaining different conditions in upper cervical. And if you just uh, search in uh, I'll YouTube. Post your, I'll post your YouTube and your okay. website. Right. YouTube, Dr. Drew Hall, right? Yeah, if you just get YouTube, Dr. Drew Hall. Sure, okay. Sorry. Keep, that's keep, all right. Yeah. Go ahead, finish that. I think I was done. So if uh, to find me on YouTube, just go into the search query and put in Dr. Drew Hall, and I'll pop my channel, I'll pop right up. I got about 103 videos as of the filming here. And where, if, if people around the country, uh, do you have a main, like the main people in all different areas? So, so if, you're, if you're listening to this YouTube video and 
the upper cervical procedure has piqued your interest and you're not in the Los Angeles area or in the San Francisco Bay where Dr. Tom Forrest, my mentor is, and you're looking to find an upper cervical, Blair upper cervical doctor, you can go to Blair Chiropractor, oh my God. Blair Chiropractic, <laughs> beep. <laughs> If, if you're listening to this video and you're outside of the Los Angeles area or outside of the San Francisco Bay Area and you're looking for a Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor, you can go to www.blairchiropractic.com and there's a directory on there with all the upper, Blair Upper Cervical doctors throughout the country and actually world. Beautiful. Anything else? Hmm. I don't think we have time anymore. I'll interview you again. Right. We are here with Dr. Tom Forrest. Uh, I've been seeing Dr. Tom Forrest for almost two, maybe three months now. I'm not sure exactly. And um, he's Dr. Drew Hall's teacher and mentor. And uh, yeah, we'd just like to hear a little background on how you got into this field and uh, why this field is so important for, um, for people who are struggling, really for everybody. But my audience happens to be people who are dealing with mental and physical and chronic illnesses. So I really want to hear your take on how, why this is so critical for people like, like that. Well, to give you a quick background, my father served in an Indian World War II and he developed malaria. One of the side effects was what are called malarial headaches, which are worse than migraines or cluster headaches. He couldn't find any resolution in the army or after he uh, left the army. But he was told about upper cervical chiropractic, which was very popular in that era. And he saw an upper neck doctor, got his atlas adjusted, and never got a headache afterwards. So that convinced him. Since then, two of my brothers and myself have followed suit uh, into the chiropractic profession. Um, the, the challenge you run into is that in the brainstem area, the upper two inches of the neck, it's really the connecting area between the brain and the rest of the body. And it's critically important that there be no blockage or disturbances that take place there. Now, some people will get their neck injuries from classically a whiplash or a sports injury. But see, sometimes it's even something as simple as that forceps delivery can twist the head and make the alignment of the atlas and the, and the, and the, and the skull not like it should be. So problems can start out as, as early as day one. Um, because only one third of the nerves in the upper neck produce pain. Two thirds of the people can be walking around with a twisted shoulder girdle, twisted pelvis, be out of alignment and I didn't realize it. Um, so it's, it's having a subluxation or misalignment that you know was there is almost like having a cavity. Sometimes you know you have it, sometimes you don't. We need more research on how the alignment of the upper neck affects uh, physical and emotional well-being. Now, Dr. B.J. Palmer opened up a sanitarium, took care of people with emotional and psychological disturbances, and at that time got double the results that standard medicine was seeing. So that was, that was quite innovative. But the challenge we have is, is in present day, we do need more research. Now, we do have Dr. Scott Rosa back in Rochester, New York, who's done some pretty amazing research. One of them was the drainage of the cerebral spinal fluid off of the brain. And it is thought that if it's not allowed to drain, neurotoxins can develop, which can lead to cognitive problems down the road. And they've shown on MRI that by accurately repositioning that atlas vertebra, that that area can tend to drain. And he's had some professional athletes who've gotten a tremendous amount of improvement as far as ocular function, cognitive function, as a result of his studies. Another important study that he did had to do with uh, the circulation to the brain. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this image very well, but this is basically an MRA, and that's an MRI of the brain. And you'll notice the blood vessels nice and thick here, but you can see the reduced blood flow here and tremendously reduced blood flow here. So what my concern would be is that person going to have cognitive problems? Is that person going to have anger issues? Is that person going to have learning disabilities because there's not enough oxygen getting to that brain? Of course, my real worry is if that much blood should go through that much blood, that blood vessel, stroke, 
aneurysm. Well, the great thing about it is this is after a few months of upper cervical care. And if you look at the same areas, you can see that those blood vessels are what are called patent, which means that they're large enough to bring all the blood flow back to the brain like it should. So needless to say, having a connection between the brain and the rest of the body and having that two-way circuitry working like it should can give a person a maximum opportunity to get well and stay well. And our attitude has always been chiropractic first and drug second and surgery last. And the primary reason for that is if being in alignment can reduce the necessity to take pretty significantly strong medications and make that person's body produce chemicals at the right level could improve brain chemistry, change a person's cognitive capacity, maybe. Could things like depression and emotional problems be helped by the neck being properly positioned? Absolutely. And if you think about it logically, if the head was designed to sit on the neck perpendicularly and the head and neck don't line up on each other, you can see how blood vessels can be crimped, you can see how nerves can be trapped, and you can see how muscles are gonna be much tighter on one side compared to the other side. This is non-self-correctable. And what this means is that that bone is locked in that wrong position. And even though there's nothing wrong with the brain, it can't get the signals through. And just as importantly, the signals can't get back up to the brain. And so that lack of communication could certainly have a chemical effect and definitely a neurological effect upon the body. So as far as I'm concerned, keeping your head on straight is probably the best way I know of that you can keep your, your body and your mind as healthy as can be. Can you share one or two or three, however many you feel, uh, of crazy, miraculous stories from upper cervical? We hear them every day. There's a colleague of mine in New Hampshire just wrote a couple of days ago. He had two 10-year-olds come in with bedwetting. And by getting the upper neck back in position, they, they've had all dry nights ever since. Now that doesn't sound like anything miraculous, but if you think about it, when you have a problem like that, you can't have sleepovers, you're very embarrassed by your condition. If other children hear about that, you can imagine it will spread like wildfire, so emotionally, psychologically, it'll be hard on a person. So that's a situation where sphincter valves are not closing like they're supposed to because there's a blockage to the nervous system. As far as dramatic changes, well over 40, plus years, I've seen so many of them, it's hard to bring them up to the surface. But um, in the Power of Upper Cervical video, I talk about a patient who had migraines and uh, she'd come in, get her migraines resolved, and then she'd drop out of care for a couple of years and she'd come back and the same thing would happen and it happened again and again and again. And I stressed with her, well, maybe if you came in a little bit more often than every two years, we could kind of keep the problem from coming back again and again. And of course, what I said went in one ear and out the other. She really wasn't listening. But then finally, I walked into this room. I remember it to this day, and she was crying. And I'd never seen her cry before. And I said, what happened? She said, well, I started having problems with the headlights, the, the glare at night. It was really bothering me. I had to pull the car over to the side. And I figured it was just stress because I was under a lot of stress. She said, then it started getting worse. And so I went to my ophthalmologist. He examined my eyes and he said, I don't see anything wrong with you. It's just stress. Well, she said about a week later, the entire peripheral vision went black. I, there was nothing out there. And I went back into the same doctor and he said to me, quit wasting my time. There's nothing wrong with your eyes. Now, we could have a comment on the bedside manner, but the truth of the matter, she knew something was wrong. So she went to a major university way out here in the Bay Area and got examined by a neuro-ophthalmologist, and this is a, a neurologist specializes in the eyes. He didn't like what he saw, so he sent her up to another major university and saw another neuro-ophthalmologist. They put their findings together, and they brought her in for a consultation. They said, we've got some bad news for you. You've got plaque buildup in your eyes. The blood vessels are too small for a stent. You're going blind and we feel you've got about six weeks until you're gonna completely lose your vision. So we'd like you to enroll in blind school to get used to the rest of your life. She said at that moment when they told me there was nothing that could help me, the first thing I thought about was chiropractic. 
He said, you didn't think I listened to what you said, where you told me that every cell in the body needs to be connected to the brain. So we took new x-rays on her. We found she had a different misalignment than she'd had in the past, made a correction. First week, no change. Second week, she went from double vision to single, double to single. Third week, better. Fourth week, she went back in to see the doctors, and the first one said, I can't believe this. There's no plaque buildup in your eyes. I remember this statement. He said, blindness is no longer an option for you. So I've jokingly said, either my corrections are so traumatic that I knock that plaque out of the arteries, or by getting her back in position, her brain was allowed to correct a condition that was thought to be uncorrectable. So essentially, there are stories like that over and over again regarding the body's capacity to heal itself. And my attitude is that I'd like to at least have people give it a chance. It's nice to have one more option you didn't think you had. Now, I was hoping before I would pass on, we would have upper neck chiropractors in all the hospitals. I was hoping we would have them in the mental institutions, the areas that are taking care of emotional, psychological problems. We're making a small inroad in that area, but not as large as it should be. So the truth of the matter is, chiropractic is one of the safest methods of care. We pay one-tenth the malpractice insurance a medical doctor pays. And insurance companies are pretty smart. They know where the risks are. And we don't use drugs. We don't use surgery. We don't have all the answers. We'd be the first person to say that. In the room next door here, I have a list of all sorts of specialists in all fields that I highly trust that I use for referrals. And I, my attitude is they're an expert in their field. I've only had minimal training. I'd rather have the expert take care of it. But an upper cervical chiropractor is an expert in the upper neck. That's what we specialize in. Now, ironically enough, the number one condition I see in here is low back pain. The number two condition I see is sciatica. That's three feet from where I'm making the adjustment. But the truth of the matter is you get a blockage here. You can feel it up here. You can feel it all the way down to the toes and anywhere in between. Okay? Mm, thank you. Where can people find you? Where can they find me? Yeah. Website. Okay. Uh, well, my, my website is uh, upperservespine.com. Okay. Um, I would highly suggest people look up upc.com. That's uh, Greg Buchanan, who is a great upper cervical advocate. And he has a lot of great stories there. You could check also the Blair Chiropractic website um, because their Blair Chiropractic um, also has a list of, of practitioners that do what I do. I had a patient in here recently who travels a lot and he had a rough flight going up to Washington. And so he was in Spokane and he saw a colleague of mine who does exactly the same work and, and she was able to get him right back into alignment. Then he flew to Honolulu it was a rough flight there. We have a doctor trained in this work right in Honolulu who was able to get him back on track also. So one of our goals would be to try to get as many Blair practitioners as we can throughout the country and eventually throughout the world so that you don't turn down a job transfer. So that your aunts and uncles and cousins and so on can also experience the same thing you've experienced. So we would like to of course see a lot more doctors doing this work. Awesome. And you're in Pleasanton, California. Pleasanton, California. That's where we are. Yes. All right. I'll post a link to all of your, your website and your YouTube in the info description. Anything else? Well, I would just say it's been a wonderful journey. And this guy behind me, if anybody deserved a Nobel Prize, it's Dr. B.J. Palmer. Um, he did not take the path of least resistance. Um, he, his dad discovered chiropractic. He discovered that the upper neck area was the most vulnerable area neurologically. That was number one. And he found number two, that the longer the corrections would stay in alignment, the faster, more permanent the recoveries were. And so if you ever investigate what he accomplished in his life, it's just astounding. If I could do one-tenth of what he did, I think I'll have led a happy life at that. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay, we're here with Dr. Pekka completing the 
trio of badass Blair chiropractors <laughs> from around the country. Um, we're here in his office in West Orange, New Jersey, just about five minutes from where I uh, live, my, where my mom lives. And um, Dr. Pekka, thank you for, for coming on. Josh, thank you so much for having me. Mm. It's a pleasure being a part of this uh, opportunity and just spreading the message of upper cervical chiropractic. I love it. I, I would love to hear about your story. Um, if you could tell us your story uh, to start it off, that would be great. Absolutely. So I was an ice hockey player growing up, and over the course of my career, I had about five or six concussions, some diagnosed, some not. And my last ice hockey concussion when I was 20 years old, I got my last concussion. And a couple days later, I woke up with blurred vision, anxiety, depression, hand tremors, knee pain, brain fog, couldn't exercise, couldn't focus, energy levels were so low, I couldn't stay awake during the day. And it was a very scary period. It lasted about four years. And I wasn't sure if I was ever going to get better because a lot of uh, medical professionals were telling me at 20 years old that I had a brain injury and I was going to have to live with it for the rest of my life. And so I did the standard traditional Western medical route. I went to see my primary care physician. I went to see neurologists. And in the beginning, they told me, you know, just rest. In a couple weeks, everything shall pass. And a couple weeks later, nothing was getting better. So I went to go see a, a specialist, a neurologist, and they put me on seizure medication because I told them my hands were shaking. They put me on antidepressants because I told them I was depressed, not because I was a depressed person, just I was getting uncontrollable flashes of severe panic attacks, anxiety, um, suicidal thoughts that was just not part of my personality. And so they put me on uh, seizure, I'm sorry, um, antidepressants. And then I was just in a severe amount of pain 24 seven. So they put me on painkillers and I wasn't a huge fan of medication, but when someone tells you, this is how you're going to get better and you don't have any other options, you, you listen to them. So I took those pills for about three months. And after three months, I felt even worse than when I started and so I just completely stopped taking all the medication because it didn't feel right for me. And I drifted into an extremely dark place because everywhere I went, the, what I was being told was uh, you had a brain injury, you're gonna have to live with this for the rest of your life. Or some people even told me that I was making it up and it was all in my head, which is extremely frustrating. And the tough thing about a brain injury is you look fine on the outside. I, I, I lost a lot of weight because I wasn't, um, I wasn't exercising or just I wasn't doing my daily routine. But from the outside, if you looked at me from afar, I looked relatively healthy. People had no idea what I was going through, but I was dying on the inside. I felt like I was in a mental prison 24 seven. And uh, it, was, it was the lowest point of my life. And thankfully, I, I remember waking up one day, just didn't wanna live anymore and uh, reached a rock bottom and uh, I kind of just recollected myself and said, you know, taking my life is not the answer and uh, I wanted to see this through. And that led to more regular chiropractors, more physical therapists, more regular doctors. And they did the best they could to help me, but nothing was really, nothing was getting me better. And then one day, uh, a couple years down the road, I landed in Dr. Hall's office, who's also on this video. Uh, he's one of my mentors, and Dr. Forrest has also been a huge impact in my life. And um, I walked into Drew's office, and he said, uh, I had the same exact story as you. There's no doubt in my mind we can get you better. And at this point, I've, I've heard this before, so I was like, okay, prove it to me. And so they took the three-dimensional x-rays. They figure out which way my... Uh, my atlas and axis have misaligned. And when we say the atlas and axis have misaligned, we're talking millimeters. So my blood work was coming back uh, fine. My MRIs and CAT scans, they were telling me they weren't seeing anything, but the upper cervical world, we analyze everything down to the exact millimeter. So you can have a two millimeter misalignment up here and it can 
throw your entire world for a spin. So I was really impressed with the time they took, the x-ray analysis, the precision of everything. And so they took the x-rays, they laid me down on the table, and I'll never forget, Drew's like, we're gonna get your life back today. So I laid down on the table, they adjusted me, Drew adjusted me, and for the first time in four or five years, my anxiety and depression went away almost immediately. I, f I felt at ease for the first time in four years. And then after an upper cervical adjustment, we like to rest people for 10, 15, 20 minutes to make sure it settles in place. And I remember resting in the back room and I felt a surge of life come back into my body that I hadn't felt in so long. It was almost like I was disconnected and then the, the connection came right back to me. And I remember I wasn't sleeping through the night for about four years. I went home that night, slept right through the night, and um, I woke up the next morning and there was no doubt in my mind what I needed to do for the rest of my life. Now, I felt very good after that first adjustment, but it was definitely a healing process where it took months. I was going, had a couple good days, a couple bad days, but sure enough, after four, five, six months, I felt better than I did before the injury, which I never thought was possible. I never thought I was going to be able to surf again, play hockey again, just go out and socialize with people. I, I just couldn't even do that. I completely got my life back, and that is why I am a Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor today. That's, that's my passion in life. Uh, there's nothing more rewarding to me than giving back people's health that they've been everywhere else. They've told me there's no hope, and you put somebody back into alignment and their whole world comes back. That is why I do what I do. That is why most of the upper cervical doctors that get into the profession do what they do because it's changed their life in some way. And it has revolutionized my life in every aspect. And it's just, uh, it's just such an honor to be a part of this video and just tell people about the amazing miracles of upper cervical. It's an honor to be part of this video with Dr. Hall and Dr. Forrest because they have been such, they've been amazing in just spreading the word of upper cervical chiropractic and getting so many people better. And I have my life back and now I get to do the same thing every day, just, just help give people their lives back, help them live to their optimal potential. And we see, we see amazing results. We see post-concussion syndrome, we see Meniere's cases, tinnitus, dizziness, vertigo, severe migraines, neck pain, back pain. We, we see almost everything because this is the control center right here. And when you have some type of interference up there, your body is just not functioning to its optimal potential. You put this, the upper neck back into alignment, you will see miracles occur. I'm a living testament to that. Dr. Hall is a living testament to that. Dr. Forrest is a living testament to that. It's, um, it's amazing work and I'm just so honored to be part of it. So the upper cervical, the, uh, from what I learned, is the atlas is like the king, the, the axis is like the queen, and then the three, C3, is like the, the pawns or something? Is Absolutely. That, yeah. So every case presents differently. Um, I've had people with misalignments on one, two, three, four that weren't really in all that much pain. I've seen one person with just an atlas misalignment that was three, four, five millimeters, and they are in the most pain you'll ever see anyone. So the levels of the misalignment, sometimes they correlate, sometimes they don't, uh -huh. but um, one and two, definitely, and three, get a little bit uh, around the brain stem. Uh, if there's any interference there, um, you're, you can be, dealing with anxiety, depression, brain fog, blurred vision, all of that stuff, because this is the control center. And like I said, um, people think that, well, some other professionals think that the bones don't move out of place and that there are, there is no subluxation. And with the cone beam CAT scan imaging, we are just, uh, what Dr. Blair found all those years ago, it's, it's actually just, it's proving it even further that we have images now that show that the bones misalign and that once you do put it back, it affects the entire body. And so I've learned a lot since the last two videos I did uh, talking to Drew Hall and 
on these 3D cone beam scans, which in another YouTube video you guys will see, or is that one up on the screen right That's there? That's a digital x-ray right digital there. Digital x-ray. Well, guys, on another video, you're going to see what these 3D cone beam scans look like. You guys are adjusting based on precise mm. readings, mathematics. There's no BS here. There's, there's no, no guesswork. Field. There's no it's, guesswork. There's no guesswork. Yeah. You're, you're, you're seeing the exact amount of millimeters and the, the angle that a the joint is out of place and yeah. you're pushing it back into the correct place, correct? Absolutely. So there is no guesswork. Every case presents differently. Everybody's joint angles are built differently. So nobody is going to get the same adjustment. It's a specific blueprint to your own anatomy. So some people's bones misalign to the left, some to the right, some backwards, some forwards. You need a personal blueprint for that person because you can't just give everybody the same adjustment because if you do, they're not gonna get better. Mm -hmm. So we have very high quality imaging that shows us which way these bones have misaligned and then we put it all back and what makes upper cervical chiropractic different than other chiropractic techniques, other professions is we say holding is healing. So we don't want you in our office three or four times a week getting your neck adjusted. Our goal is to give you one neck adjustment and have it hold weeks to months to years because when it holds in place, that's when the true healing happens. If it keeps moving out, um, if somebody's just constantly working on the area, there's not a lot of holding, there's not a lot of healing going on. So the, the magic of the adjustment is when it stays in place and it starts to hold. And that's one of my favorite things about the Blair technique is because I was basing my life off of doctor's appointments three or four times a week, just going anywhere I could to get relief for a couple minutes. Blair chiropractic was the first technique that I almost became my own doctor because once they put it back, I didn't need to rush to somebody to, to, to feel good again. It stayed in place. My body started to heal itself on its own and um, healing comes from the inside out. So once you remove the interference, you put it back down to the exact millimeter it needs to be, everything starts to heal and you become your own advocate for health because your body is doing a lot of healing internally. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Is there anything else you wanna share with the camera? Um, just this is, this is the most amazing, this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. If you talked to me about five, six years ago, I was, I, I was not, I was not living life. I was, I was in a very dark place and I was gearing up for a long, miserable life. And um, I can't tell you what an honor it is to be part of this video. If anybody has any questions, comments, they wanna reach out to me, I will be happy to help. That's why I'm here. Upper cervical chiropractic is the truth. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm here for you. So yeah, anyone on the East Coast, come fly to this man, Dr. Kevin Pekka in West Orange, New Jersey. Definitely worth the trip. You have to see for yourself in order to know for yourself. That's my you know motto. A lot of people are skeptical. A lot of people have been to, have spent thousands of dollars on other chiropractors, including yep. myself. And the reason I'm putting so much effort into sharing these this video and, and many other Blair videos to come is because of how crucial it is. I would say, I would almost go as far as saying most other chiropractic work is a joke compared to this. <laughs> I know you're probably not allowed to say that. But <laughs> well, so, I'm, a, I'm yeah. a fan of all chiropractic work. Yeah. You, you talk to other chiropractors, they certainly do get their miracles. But when it comes down to people that have some very serious neurological yeah. conditions going on, there is nothing better than upper cervical chiropractic because there's no guesswork. We're putting you back into alignment down to the exact millimeter. And um, it's, yeah, that's if, I don't want to bash the entire yeah, profession because yeah, yeah. I love it, but yeah. um, upper cervical chiropractic, it doesn't get any more specific. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And I was talking to you about this before. Um, definitely be an advocate for your own health. Keep knocking on doors. Don't take no for an answer. Whether it's you're getting healthy and our office is upper cervical or you want to look into other, you know, because acupuncture is great. Other things are great. Just keep, keep doing your own research and um, you can, the body can heal from almost anything. So just don't lose hope. Don't give up and uh, just keep, keep knocking on doors.